Hey, everybody. I'm here with Dan Mangus, who in 2015, with his partner, decided to start an insurance company, as one does, uh, based on an auto insurance company, based on how people drive, among other things, but primarily how people drive. So maybe take us through the thinking, the business model, and the growth you've seen to date. Root was started four years ago. Um, really because we believe the price that people pay for car insurance should primarily be based on how they drive. Whereas traditionally, car insurance carriers have set rates primarily on demographics, age, gender, credit score. Of course, two people of the same age and gender could drive very differently from each other. Somebody might be safe, responsible, maybe they don't even drive very often. Somebody else might be aggressive and reckless and drive a lot. Those two people shouldn't be paying anywhere close to the same price for their car insurance. When we started the company, we thought maybe we could build this technology to gather data from an app on the phone. So people just download an app, put it on their phone, we'll read data from the sensors on the phone, effectively do a bunch of data science on that to try to determine if somebody's a safe driver or a risky driver. And uh, then we thought to get started, it'd be a bit easier to partner with existing insurance carriers and maybe find somebody that we could work with in building the initial versions of our product. Probably a lot easier. We, we thought so, yeah. um, but as we got into those conversations, we realized that there wasn't somebody we were going to be able to partner with that would allow us to move at the speed we wanted to be able to move at and create the quality of product that we really wanted to create uh, on top of any sort of platform from another carrier. Um, so we decided to go down the long, arduous path of becoming an insurance carrier ourselves, which did mean it took over a year to launch, build the foundational infrastructure of all the technology that we needed to run a car insurance carrier and sell our very first policy. Um, but I think it was certainly worth it, and I don't think Root would have been successful without going down that path. So give us the cliff notes on how the tech, tech works. We decided to build everything completely from scratch. We looked at um, some people to partner with there as well, um, some software products that we thought maybe we could use off the shelf. But we decided that we could do a better job by building a team of software engineers and building all this technology. When we started the company, we first worked on the problem of gathering data from sensors on the phone as people are driving. We read over 10 data points per second. We've now gathered billions of miles of driving data from mobile phones directly. And then because we were using the phone to collect this driving data, we decided to make mobile the primary user interface for getting a policy from root. Uh, Eventually, this has really significant impacts on our business and our ability to service our customers because we're certainly the only insurance carrier that can say 100% of their customers have their mobile app installed. So no agents in the field, no, no agents. and mortar. Uh, we are working on a web-based product, but um, to date, it's been entirely mobile acquisition. You download the app, um, set it up, put in some basic information, and then basically drive for a period of about two to three weeks. It can vary a little bit. At the end of that period, uh, we send a push notification and say your quote's ready. So you don't have to do anything. You don't have to tell the app when you're about to drive. Uh, and then start to finish, downloading the app, getting a quote, purchasing a policy, making changes to your policy, copies of your insurance card billing. Everything is right there inside of the app. And to go along with that, we've built the back-end platform that powers the business as well, completely from scratch. So tell me why, why do you think the opportunity was there, and did anything give you pause? Or your investors, you were invest you were backed very early and very prominently, so. The company was started with a $5 million investment from Drive Capital, which is a venture capital firm that focuses on backing companies in the Midwest. I think recognizing that there's a tremendous opportunity to build incredible companies outside of the coast, uh, but that area of the country had been underserved by venture capital. Uh, they invested $5 million in route when we started the company, and we felt like that was enough to actually make this happen and build everything that we needed. Is You look at the industry as a whole, Interestingly, what we're working on at Root, in a certain sense, isn't that innovative. Insurance companies have known for a long time that how people drive is way more predictive of their likelihood of getting into an accident than their demographics, but they haven't actually been able to execute on that uh, idea and actually build that product and bring that idea to life. And that's the main thing that we were able to do at Root, largely because we are very much a technology company. Uh, whereas, as you look at a lot of insurance carriers, they do outsource a lot of their technology to partners. So you're confident your risk model is going to be better, basically, from the start. Certainly, having data on how people drive that other insurance carriers don't have allow us to set rates which are more accurate and more predictive of risk, which is probably how we would look at it from an internal perspective. But I think more importantly, from a consumer perspective, it's more fair. 
you know, people are paying the price that they should be paying based on their actual risk of getting into an accident, whereas if they have to pay the same as everybody their age and their gender, you know, a lot of people are going to be paying a lot more for insurance than they should be. And there's two things you don't put in your model. You, you capture a lot of the standard metrics, but occupation and education, that's the other one? Those are the two that we completely exclude. Okay. So with a lot of insurance companies, uh, you will pay a different rate for insurance depending on if you only finished high school or if you have a college degree, you could pay a different rate for insurance depending on if you're a, a software engineer or you work at a retail store. Yeah. Uh, but at root, we've completely eliminated those two variables. We do still look at some of the others um, because kind of all else being equal, a 16-year-old is still a lot more likely than a 26-year-old to get into an accident. Sure. They're a new, inexperienced driver. But those rating variables have less of an impact on rates with root than they do at other carriers because we're primarily setting rates based on that driving behavior. And we're really hoping that over time we can continue to eliminate some of those more traditional demographic-based variables from insurance pricing and increasingly price just simply based on how well people are driving. And you're making this explicit. This is part of your marketing. This is part of your message to people. When people download the app, uh, we explain to them how the process works. We give them feedback throughout the test drive. You can see a scorecard in the app and get some insight into how you're doing with braking and your turns, distracted driving, uh, which is a really big source. And then we're explicit, too, about the data we're capturing and you know, that we're gathering this location data and uh, reading from the accelerometer sensor on the phone so that we can understand how well somebody drives and price their insurance accordingly. Are you getting? younger customers than the industry on average, different customers, safer customers? Really, the customer segment that we perform the best on is any customer segment where they traditionally have high rates for insurance, which are younger drivers, low credit score drivers, um, but actually drive better than other people who may look like them. Okay. Um, so we, we perform the best with, with people who are the most mispriced when a carrier is only looking at their demographics. And beyond that, uh, I think not surprisingly, in terms of what we see, you know, we do skew younger single urban renters, um, you know, people who are more likely to want to buy a car insurance policy sure. from an app on their phone as uh, opposed to going to an agent down the street. But you know, we also have 90-year-olds that have uh, root insurance, and some of them have told us it's the first thing they bought on their phone. Yeah. Uh, privacy concerns? I guess if someone's overly worried about this, they don't come to you at all. But is that something you have to? you have to speak to and you have to get people over the hump in terms of we're going to be watching you drive for three weeks and then maybe indefinitely thereafter? It comes up occasionally. Yeah. Uh, but again, we're very upfront about the data that we're collecting and how we're using that data, which is, I think, where companies have struggled or had challenges around privacy issues and data collection is really just when they're not transparent about the data they're collecting and how they're using it. And the thing I appreciate the most about Root is that this data has like a very uh, direct applicability to the product that we're building and the service that we're offering. And it's not like we're using this data in tangential ways. Um, it's directly benefiting consumers. And primarily the 10 metrics, is that still kind of the standard in terms of what you're looking at in behavior? In terms of the driving data that we're analyzing? Yeah, yeah some of the biggest factors are hard braking. Uh, not surprisingly, uh, people don't really hit their brakes any harder than they need to to stop in the distance that they need to stop. And nobody's like, well, I could have hit my brakes really soft here, but I just decided to slam on them and then like roll up to the stop sign. So you know that. That doesn't happen. Yeah. Um, a lot of times a hard braking event is a narrow miss on an accident. And maybe not every single time that happens. You know, maybe a car pulls out in front of you and you're just forced to hit your brakes really hard. But all else being equal, if we have one driver that has 20 hard braking events in a month and another driver that has 80 hard braking events in a month, that driver with AD is a lot more likely to eventually get into an accident. And distracted driving has been uh, a really big factor for us now as we've done more analysis around that. And especially as we've grown and been able to look at the losses that have come in and correlate the data that we're gathering with the accidents that people are getting into. And it's really been shocking uh, how well correlated distracted driving in with, with auto insurance accidents. And it's now something that we've incorporated into our pricing plans. Is it one of the more heavily weighted things? Is it the heavily, most heavily weighted? It's, it's one of the top two. Yeah. The other being? Heartbreaking. Heartbreaking, OK. Um, so let's talk about the, the, the industry overall. I mean, ostensibly, you play this out. You're getting better drivers. You're, you're getting a more accurate risk model. And you're sort of pushing worse drivers onto the competition, is it sort of imperative for other underwriters to catch up and to pay more attention to how people are driving? Is that kind of table stakes and 
the yeah. yeah, I think that was very astute. We increasingly acquire the best drivers as customers and leave other drivers with other carriers. In fact, for a certain percentage of people that come to Root and download our app, we won't offer them a quote at all. We would if we could give them the price that uh, we felt like was reflective of their risk, but we know if we're charging them substantially more than they would have traditionally been charged that they're not gonna buy the quote from us anyway. So it's really like, which negative review do you want in the app store? The, I got a really high rate, or I didn't get a quote at all. We decided we would take the, I didn't get a quote at all negative review. Um, so for a certain percentage of people, we don't offer them a quote, and uh, they're just increasingly left with other carriers. There is very much, I think as you just identified, a flywheel effect that happens at scale, whereas carriers are increasingly left with the riskier drivers as customers because they don't have telematics data to price on that could drive up their loss costs, forcing them to raise rates, prompting more customers to shop around and move. Although the industry is so large that it'll take a long time for that to take effect, but the insurance industry has seen uh, that type of effect before with the introduction of using credit for pricing insurance. Right. And you're also, I gather these incumbent underwriters, they need to do it with discounts or penalty pricing, whereas you have the sort of luxury of not bothering with that, just coming straight with a price. You definitely see a lot of different pricing gimmicks from different carriers, all kinds of different discounts, and um, I know I, I looked at my bill from a previous insurance carrier and tried to go through it and just figure out how much I was paying, and right. there were more line items on that than a typical grocery receipt. Um, with Root, it's very straightforward. You know, we're, we're pricing insurance primarily based on how you drive. Um, there's not a lot of complexity you know, beyond that point, and we've really tried to simplify the process for consumers. Um, where are you taking share? And talk about growth a little. We, you gave me some numbers backstage that were impressive. We're really at a breakout stage for the company now. Um, so it started in 2015, but didn't launch and have our first paying customer until the middle of 2016. Um, took a long time to really get product market fit. Because insurance is regulated at a state level, we have to go state by state, working with each respective department of insurance to be able to enter into that state. Uh, today we're live in 25 states, which allow us to reach about 45% of the population of the country. But when we first launched, we spent an entire year only in Ohio, and actually only with our iOS app. We hadn't built the technology to gather data from the sensors on the phone on Android yet, and really spent time working with consumers, get, establishing product market fit, understanding customer acquisition, and making sure that we built something that was working before we tried to go and scale it. Uh, in the middle of 2017, we launched the Android app. We started expanding into other states. We finished 2017 with $4 million in direct written premium, which is not a lot of premium. It's certainly not enough to sustain an entire car insurance carrier. Right. Fast forward to 2018, that's really when our state expansion process accelerated. We continued launching in more states, continued iterating on the product, shipping updates to our mobile app every single week, releasing changes to our backend platform every single day. And we finished 2018 with $106 million in direct written premium, up from four in 2017. Fast forward to this year, and in Q1 2019, in the first three months of this year, we wrote $88 million in direct written premium, which is 83% of our 2018 yearly total. So we're really on a remarkable growth trajectory right now, and I think the exciting thing for us is that we're still only live in those 25 states that allow us to reach about 45% of the population of the country, so we still have tremendous opportunity ahead of us. So theoretically, you double that if you keep roughly the same Just rate. Just doing what we're doing today, but continuing that in that process. And are you taking customers from the slower, lazier companies? Where are they coming from? We see it pretty much proportionate to where customers are at today. Um, certainly a lot of customers switching to us from Progressive and Geico, but Progressive and Geico also just have a lot of customers. Um, they also have customers that have purchased insurance directly, um, which is, I think, a big thing. Um, yeah. Really, Progressive and Geico have gotten into their positions of prominence by kind of winning the air of the internet and selling directly to consumers online. We think Root has the exact same opportunity in the era of mobile, and especially with mobile telematics. So consumers comfortable purchasing a policy on their own, don't want to go down the agent, don't want to talk to anybody on the phone, um, just want a very simple way to get an insurance policy. Root has created the best experience for those people, and we uh, proportionally see them switching to, to Root from those direct carriers. Um, are they catching up at all? I have State Farm personally, and they sent me a, a little chip to put in my car the other day. It seems like they're paying more attention to usage-based pricing. Is that a threat? We definitely see a lot of the incumbents experimenting in this area, um, trying to build out the technology to run these programs. Uh, a lot of them really struggle to execute on the technology, and it's a challenge. Uh, 
I'm sure integrating uh, telematics data into like a mainframe system for insurance rating is uh, not an easy undertaking yeah. and really uh, is a big disadvantage in terms of trying to like create these programs, especially when there are constantly new mobile devices coming out onto the market, new iOS and Android operating system versions coming onto the market every single year. It's really a forcing function for companies needing to be able to execute really rapidly, and our speed of execution is absolutely a competitive advantage for us at root. I think we'll continue to see some of the carriers experiment with how they can get this data and have more mobile telematics data, um, but it'll probably be a challenge. You feel confident in the tech that you have? I'm the CTO of the company, uh, so I might be a bit biased. Um, but we have an exceptional team of software engineers. Uh, and I, I think really the, you know, trying to build the entirety of the software that you need to run a car insurance carrier with a handful of software engineers at the start, and we've, we've now since grown the engineering team to 100, is incredibly difficult. Um, but we've built an exceptionally talented team. And uh, we've, the exciting thing about the growth and the numbers I shared is it's really helped us prove out that the technology is working. As those insurance losses come in and more paying claims, and uh, we're executing that entire process, which we also built the technology for and handle entirely internally. Uh, that's allowed us to really understand which variables are the most correlated with losses. And there's another kind of flywheel effect there of the more data we gather, the more predictive our data gets, and... The machine's getting smarter. Exactly, and we have more mobile telematics data priced in, into an insurance book than any other insurance carrier, even the big ones. Um, can you scale to other lines of insurance? Do you need a bundle? Eventually, a lot of people do like bundling their insurance products, and that will be something that we'll want to look into, how we can better serve that segment of, the, uh, of consumers. Uh, but we have a tremendous opportunity just in auto insurance. It's a $245 billion industry, and that's a factual $245 billion. That's not me making some lofty assumptions on the back of an envelope calculation about you know, our total, total addressable market. Um, financials from insurance carriers are filed publicly. It's a $245 billion industry, so there's plenty of opportunity there. At the same time, I would say Root's core expertise is really on relying on trends in technology and new sources of data to price insurance more accurately and fairly than any other insurance carrier can, and then also use that technology to build better products and user experiences on top of it. And I think that core expertise can be extended to other insurance products or even possibly other products outside of insurance down the road. Uh, biggest challenge to date, is it regulatory? I would say the biggest challenge is regulatory. I mean, we'd love to be in 50 states now. Yeah. Um, we're not, not in 50 states due to anything on our end. Um, we need to work with each department and go through their process, and some of those processes are lengthy. Uh, there are also constraints sometimes placed on growth, uh, given the regulation and the capital management and um, what you're required to hold in terms of statutory reserve capital, and that creates a big constraint too. Uh, we, we think we have the best insurance product in the market, a much more fair product, and we'd love to get that into more consumers' hands. We've seen an incredible response to what we've done so far. You know, we're a top 30 app in the finance category on both iOS and Android. We have a 4.7 star rating on iOS with over 20,000 reviews, and I think that's really a testament to how excited consumers have been to have a better auto insurance product that is priced more fairly for them. So we'd love to grow even faster, uh, but uh, sometimes that's challenging given the regulatory constraints. Yeah. What's the next date, do you think? We have a lot that we're working on. When we initially started down this path, root in typical uh, methodical fashion, highly analytical, we decided to rank and score all states in the order that we would want to go into them based on like a variety of factors. But we realized that the unpredictability of the timelines was going to be an issue. So we decided to take the shotgun approach of just trying to get into all of them all at once. And the order that we've been expanding in is typically the order that the departments of insurance have been able to uh, work with us and uh, get us into that state. So it's we're- It's nothing to do with your, your dream scenario. It's just where it happened. We tried. We tried. Yeah. We, it was, yeah, we had some great spreadsheets. Um, but yeah, uh, so the next date will you know, be the one where the Department of Insurance gets back to us the next. Uh, our engineering team has actually worked ahead of the state expansion process and implemented the code and the technology that we've needed to expand into about 10 states that we're not in yet. Um, so the nice thing is once that does come through, we're ready to flip the switch and good to go. Um, what are you seeing in terms of behavior change in your customers? I imagine they're on their best behavior when they download the app and start their test drive. Does it get worse? Does it get better? Once you give them a quote and they sign up, do they get worse? How yeah, we've, we've worse? done a lot of analysis around that too. Um, so we look at, we have the initial test drive period where we produce a score for everybody. 
Uh, and then we'll also look at how somebody's score changes over time, just so we can understand how driving behavior changes over time. And we use that to inform the duration of the test drive and that initial period of data collection that we put in place. Uh, we do certainly see that you know, people will drive safer if they know their driving is being observed. Uh, it's something formerly called the Hawthorne effect, where people modify their behavior. But a lot of people have also been driving on a daily basis for years, decades. It's really hard to yeah, talk to anybody who set a, a New Year's resolution about the difficulty in changing a daily habit. It's very difficult. Um, so for the most part, we see that people drive about the same during the test drive period as they will at later times. So you're confident two weeks is enough, three weeks? We are. Uh, yeah, we, and we've really tried to balance the user experience with the data. You know, if you ask our data scientists, they would prefer that everybody drive for years before we insure anybody, and then we'll be very certain. Before you give um, a number, yeah. But, uh, you know, a big part of Root just isn't about the data science. It's also about the user experience and the ease and convenience that we've bought. Um, you know, it's kind of remarkable comparing downloading our app and going through our process to what you traditionally see in insurance. Uh, you can get through the entire thing without typing any data into the keyboard on the phone at all. We leverage the camera on the phone to scan the barcode on the back of your driver's license to read in that information. And even when you get to purchase a policy, if you have Apple Pay set up on your phone, you just put your thumb on your Touch ID sensor, or now like double tap and point at your face or whatever you have to do, and boom, you've bought an insurance policy. You're there. So if it wasn't for the test drive process, you could certainly get start to finish with Root in under a minute. Really? Right. I got to do that. Last time I timed it was 47 seconds. Um, we're out of time. So two quick, overrated, underrated, um, huge surge in traffic fatalities in this country. Do you think distracted driving gets worse, gets better? Gets worse. Gets worse. Yeah. Um, I think it's, it's, a, it's a problem. Like, I think one of the you know, interesting things from an, running an insurance carrier is realizing that what we're predicting, I probably said the word risk up here 20 times. Uh, we talk about it a lot in terms of predicting risk, but really we're predicting the likelihood that somebody gets into a car accident and um, you know, a lot of people get injured in car accidents. And um, I think distracted driving is, uh, is a big issue. And I think uh, there's a lot of you know, great things that uh, the, the device manufacturers have been putting in the devices to help people with that. But I also hope there's a lot that we can do with understanding our risk behavior and actually just helping consumers be safer on the roads. But it's some time before the, we sort of crest the danger curve here. I really hope so. Yeah. Um, second one, insurance rate based on miles driven. Is that something we'll see more of? Is that something you guys are interested in? Overrated, underrated? I would say um, overrated. Uh, mileage is a big factor, not surprisingly, the more you drive, the more likely you are to get into an accident. But how you drive is much more impactful than the actual mileage you've driven. And the meter billing approach of you know, paying based on how many miles you drive uh, really makes things unpredictable for consumers. And it's important, as I said, to not just look at the data behind these products, but understand the consumer experience and really understand consumers. And we've done a lot to not just be a highly quantitative company that analyzes every single aspect of our product and iterates on it on a daily basis, but an empathetic company that understands consumers, gets qualitative feedback from them, and understands how to better serve them as we're continuing to work on building out our products. Root Insurance, um, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Hal. That's that's it for the day, I think, or for us at least.